Uh, Hello ladies and gentlemen, uh, give me one second to control the volume on this uh, external set here so that it doesn't interfere with, uh, with that of my microphone. All right, good evening everybody, good evening everyone out there in Ground Zero, good evening Bamenda, Kumba, Boya, Victoria, Moyuka, Ekona, Kumba, Mamfe, uh, Lebialam, of course, Menji, Azi, every one of you out there tuning in to this uh, very special broadcast. I want to welcome you and also welcome those who are watching on YouTube and those who are watching uh, right here before me on Facebook, those who are watching on any other platform, I want to welcome you to this uh, very special broadcast. I believe this will give you inspiration for this uh, revolution. I come to you each time I believe I bring you inspiration and I just hope that this message will do just that. Uh, as usual, as you join, I please encourage you, uh, do the sharing, do the sharing, and also let me know where you are sharing from. Uh, I like to see people coming in from ground zero. I like to see uh, people coming in from where the war zones are, because I like to uh, hear what they have to say. And as usual, once we hit uh, the 1,000 mark, I will do this broadcast proper. So please invite friends as you join. We have almost uh, 200 people right now. Tune in. Please, I'm pleading with you. I don't want to take time in this broadcast. This is a very, very important broadcast. So please uh, uh, share the link as you join. Share the link as, we jo as you join. Once you hit 1,000 people, I will do the broadcast proper. Please give me one second to turn on the lighting here. I forgot to turn that on. Thank you. Thank you and sorry about that. I hope this uh, makes a difference. All right. 
Again, thanks for tuning in, and uh, I have a very spe special message for you today. I want you to share the link as you join. Please share the link as you join. Share the link as you join. This is a very special broadcast that I bring to you today. So if you are just joining, please share the link as you join. And again, I want to formally welcome all of you on Facebook, on YouTube, on SCBC website, on every other platform where you are joining. And please, you can also share the link on your, on your Facebook so others can join on your Facebook. And of course, I also want to welcome those joining on the SCTV, SCTV Southern Cameroon's television. Thank you for those joining through that platform and you on YouTube and of course Facebook. We are hitting almost 300 people right now. Please, as you join, I'm planning to share the link so I can go straight into this broadcast proper. Share the link, please. Thank you. Share the link. Thank you. Once we hit the 1,000 mark, I will uh, come to you with a broadcast proper. In the meantime, I'd like to know where you are joining in from. Please let me know where you're joining in from. We are over 300 people now. Please, if these 300 people will share the link in less than no time, we will have over 600 people in that 1,000 people mark. So please share the link as you join. Share the link as you join. And uh, let me know where you are joining in from. I see in the for time and Nang says, I'm joining in from Monique. I also see, uh, I also see, uh, see, Sombani says, I'm joining in from uh, Washington District of Columbia. I also see uh, Ama Avis, he says he's joining in from the United Arab Emirates. So please, as you join, let me know who you're joining in from. We are almost hitting 400, 400 number right now for me to start the broadcast at 1,000 people. Please share the link as you join. And let me know whether you can hear me good enough out there. Let me know the microphone is good, the sound is good as you join, please. I see uh, Charlotte Ne from Ground Zero. I see Nestor from the UK. I also see Echus Esuchon, say from La Republic du Cameroon. Alex Asa from North Carolina. Uh, Emmanuel from Le BLM Wabane. Thank you. I see uh, Mavis from Austria. Emmanuel from Australia. Edison from uh, South Africa. Wonja from, uh, oh, I missed that one, I'm sorry. And uh, please keep the numbers coming, keep the locations coming in. I see Ben Che from Germany. I also see uh, Emilia from Dubai. I see also Inge Incham from uh, Damascus. Wow, there are Cameroonians in Damascus, that's interesting. Nelly from Germany. Mofu Baron says, sound is good. Thank you for letting me know. Cletus Injilam says, we are okay, 100%. Thank you for letting me know. And I also see B Square, Rafi, Germany, Stuttgart. And uh, there is also Ngancha Divine. This is my good follower. Thank you. He says from Canada. Uh, Bobby from Luxembourg. Uh, Jaquil Agbar says, watching from Wavis Bay. Thank you. Please share the link. We're almost hitting 500 people right now almost 500 people right now share the link as you join and as you share the link and we wait for the proper broadcast i just want to brief you about a few things that uh are going on on the ground on ground zero uh, right now i'm sure most of you are tuned in to the news coming out from anyajua in belo and the environs the war currently going on in those in those places lots of casualties you watch on facebook social media you see horrible images of ambazonians killed slaughtered like animals they're lying in the bushes like those animals we always saw when the gas at legnios exploded 
This is what La Republique du Cameroon is doing to our citizens. And if there is anything, if there is one thing that should encourage us to not want to quit or give up on this revolution, it should be images as the ones that we see coming out of Belo and Yajua in other places. I also uh, have seen some requests sent to me about some vaccinations which are ongoing in Bamenda in other parts of the southern Cameroons. I have not been able to ascertain whether that uh, piece of information is accurate. But it is always better to err on the safe side. We want to warn every southern Cameroonian in ground zero. If nurses or doctors, whoever they are who are coming to you for vaccination, please make sure that they are legitimate nurses coming from legitimate quarters to carry out vaccination on your children. Do not allow anybody put a needle on your children if there is no official announcement for that exercise to be carried out. There should be no clandestine vaccination exercise going on in Ambazonia without a proper announcement to it. So again, we have not confirmed the validity of that uh, uh, in piece of information about the vaccination going on uh, against polio in the southern Cameroons. But it is better we err, we err on, the, on, on, on the side. Anybody coming to your home to vaccinate your children, please ask them, find out where they are coming from, who has sent them, and show, let them show you a comic from authorities, from legitimate hospitals, asking them to carry out that exercise. Again, we have seen the images coming out of Fundong, and uh, we are very silent with what we see, but again, that is one reason why we have to continue this fight. We have no option, we have no alternative until this battle, this war is won. We have over 600 people now. Please share the link, 600 of you who have joined. If you, have if you share the link, we would be having our, over 1,200 now. When we hit the 1,000 people, when we hit the 1,000 people, I will begin with this broadcast proper. In the meantime, I have for uh, Erika Zara watching from the United Kingdom. I also have Whispers Wees watching from St. Anne in Jamaica. Wow, there are Cameroonians in Jamaica. That's interesting. Obia Eric says, uh, wait, well, he doesn't give the location. I see Forben Nelson not giving the location. He says he's watching. Uh, I see Ojong Bismarck says he's watching from La Republique du Cameroon. I see also Edmond Naboko from Germany. Please let me know where you're tuning in from and let's get the numbers up there, please. Let's get the numbers up there. We're almost 650 right now. This is a very, very important message that I bring to you today, and I mean that. I'm not just saying this to get you sitting there and looking at me. I am telling you exactly what I mean. This message is a policy message. It's a very, very inspiring and important message, and I can't just deliver it to have the house. So please, as you join, do me a favor. Share the link in your WhatsApp group, your Facebook groups, your Twitter groups, every social media platform on which you can share the message. Please do so. Do so right now. We are almost 700 right now. Uh, about 300 more to go before we start the broadcast proper. But again, I want to thank the, uh, every one of you watching, watching at me from ground zero, from the home front, for your resilience to this revolution. It is because of you that we are still having this fight going on. If you had given up, if you had turned your backs to this revolution, everything would have been over. But you stood in there, you held your grounds, and I can assure you, all of us out here in the diaspora, we are holding our grounds 
and standing with you, we are not giving up until we win this battle. So please, thank you. We have almost 700. We have 700 people right now. 700 people right now. Paula. Paula is joining in from Victoria. Thank you for the right name. I also see uh, Fischer. This must be a German name. I can't even pronounce that. From Bundes. Fischer from Bundes. I see George Tando. There you go. Abudu Ranch, Nigeria. Missy Manka and Kim Jones. Godwin Engel from Bamenda. And Kevin Gooday. No location. He said, Bia will pay for this. You are right. You will pay for it. Uh, from Econam Benge. Thank you. Pius Ayuk from Maryland. Please share the link. Please share the link. Share the link as you join. Share the link as you join. In King Fozzi Alexis from Missouri. Obia Eric said, Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ayuk Enes from, from Gasimia. Wow, that is uh, United Arab Emirates. I also see uh, Ban Enda says, joining in from Douala in the colonial territory. I also see Bernadette Fon says, from Ground Zero, Batiba. So many of you, please, we are almost hitting 800 people. Please share the link as you join the broadcast. Share the link as you join the broadcast. I also see Anya Alfred from Benin. Watching from Benin, he says. Nesto Katum, watching from the UK. Parsaps from Canada, Edmonton, Canada. Diodone, watching from Tunisia. Kang Kelvin from Ground Zero. Festus de Conge from Norway. Uh, Solo Mokoso from Germany. Isa in Gaza, or watching from uh, Oromia. I don't know where Oromia is. I see Mariana Bako. I see Danson von Cham from Norway. Obia Eric, I mentioned that already. Ago Shela, don't know where is, she's coming from. Julius in G. Ferdinand Tufak, Tufakak. We are almost 800, less than 200 people to go. Please, I'm pleading with you. Let's get this going. Let's get the numbers, the numbers rising. Let's get the numbers rising so I can come to you with this very special message. Thank you. Bam Enda is watching. Oh, no, I've, I've read that already. Cody, Cody, Maryland. Rosa Siri, Netherlands. And uh, Patrick Epit, or Peter, Maryland. Kevin Sean, South Africa. Cristo, Spain. Monyongo, Maryland. Godi, Godi Go, Singapore. Kim Jones, we are almost hitting 900. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The numbers are climbing. Please, those of you just joining, share the link. Once we hit the, the miracle number of 1,000, I will bring you this special message. This message, I consider it very, very important to this struggle. In the recent days, we have seen a number of things happening in Ground Zero. We have seen the American ambassador invite some uh, uh, community leaders to his office to, talk, to, to, to consult on dialogue. We have seen the French emissaries running to Bermuda to discuss a way out of this crisis. We have seen Issa Chiruma frame up a, uh, a hostess crisis that was never there in his office. We have seen a lot of things going on. The French have asked their citizens to withdraw from the southern Cameroons. Lots and lots and lots of things are going on right now as I speak. And of course, also very important is the fact that our trip to Boya is still going on. Please, if you have not yet made your contribution, if you have not yet paid for your trip to Boya, of course, you still have the chance, the opportunity to do so. So I encourage you, please, go to the website, mytriptoboya.com. 
www.mytriptoboyad.com and pay for your ticket. You can do instrumental payments. If you are in ground zero, you can do the same. If you are worried and concerned about your identity, please download a VPN and it will hide your identity from any line of public agent who may be looking out for you. We need these funds to shorten our journey to Boya. We need these two million dollars to shorten our journey to Boya. The president has said, if we can put this money in his hands, within three months, our journey to Boya will no longer be a dream. It will be a near possession. So please, please, get to the computer right now. Get on the website, mytriptoboya.com. Get your ticket ready. And let me know you, do, you, 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 you did so. But again, this uh, uh, broadcast today is not about my trip to Boya per se. As important as it is, this, this broadcast is about, it's about a very important message about uh, the interim government's policy position on a number of things which are going on right now on ground zero. We are 970 people right now, and any moment right now, any moment from now, I will start this broadcast. Thank you so much for making it happen. And as I continue with the broadcast, please, please continue sharing the link. Continue sharing the link as I continue with the broadcast. Again, about 10 people to go. We must start this at 1,000 people. So please, please, let's get started. Let's get started. Let's get started. As we continue with the broadcast again, keep on sharing the link. Keep on sharing the link. Again, I bring to you a very, very important policy message in this broadcast. And I have no reason to hold you anymore. Fellow Ambazonians, many of you watching and listening now have most likely read or heard of the rumors alleging that yours truly is about to quit the interim government and also quit the revolution. Rest assured that nothing could be farther from the truth. I have not at any moment even contemplated about it, nor asked by anyone or under any form of pressure by anyone to even consider or give a thought to quitting this revolution. That I am part of this crusade to free our homeland like you wasn't by my own making. Like many of you, we are all compelled to. It was forced upon all of us. It isn't a calling for a select few. It is a calling for every Amazonian who has lived through such injustice and slavery as meted on us by the annexationists and colonial masters in French Cameroon. What this means is this. Until we have seen and entered the promised land, until the streets of Boya in Bamenda are festered with the blue and white stripes of our flag, of our colors, heralding a free republic of Ambazonia, until we have reclaimed our 1919 boundaries that set us apart from French Cameroon as an independent country, until all those votes at the United Nations for the independence of Ambazonia are redeemed, there is no quitting. Again, there is no quitting. Those who quit for any reason, especially at this moment, have not in the first place been called to the front. How can I quit the struggle when Sisiku Julius Ayoktabe steal languages in unknown confinement? How can I quit the fight 
when Tarsang Wilfred, one of those that God chose to pioneer this revolution, is still locked up. How can I quit when prisons in French Cameroon are still overflowing with freedom fighters like Mancho BBC, Penn Terrence, and thousands of others, citizens of the southern Cameroon, who will fight for them if we begin to chicken out right now? Above all, how can I quit the struggle when getting to Boya? The eternal capital of a free southern Cameroon still remains a dream. We are not ignorant of the fact that in this crusade, like many others, there are different groupings. Each group is guided by different sets of principles. And those principles essentially define what and who we are. In spite of that, we are reminded that we set out in this revolution to crucify and annihilate one enemy and one enemy only, La Republique du Cameroon. Its institutional strongholds in our country, Ambazonia, and every accomplice who aids the yesteryears perpetuation of slavery upon all of us. The revolution isn't against us. It is for us. The interim government has on several occasions made it very, very clear. The position that unless a person is found aiding in abating the enemy, our target must be those that have little or nothing to do with, all, with our already victimized populace. It is, the, it is the position of the interim government that every group involved in this revolution must do its best to, if possible, avoid and minimize the kind of damage that results to, to resentment and pain on our own people instead of the enemy that we seek to annihilate. It was for this reason that the interim government of the Federal Republic of Ambazonia initiated the Ambazonia Self-Defense Council, the ASC. The ASC seeks to bring under one umbrella all self-defense groups operating in their homeland for better coordination and collaboration. The ASC was created to formulate a single code of conduct or set of rules that applies to all of the defense groups so that practices that have some people arrogating to themselves the powers of life and death are checked by subjecting everyone and every action under scrutiny and control. Not all the groups on the ground have joined the ASC. But the ASC and the interim government has continued outreach to all the other groups that have not yet joined. We so need that collaboration so that private militias like the ones that Paul Atanga G is setting up can be easily detected and immediately crushed before they wreak havoc and then turn around and blame all of us. That is one important thing about the creation of the ASC. The BS regime isn't running out of vicious ideas. The interim government is now in possession of intelligence linking Paul Atanganji to the formation of heavily armed militias within our territory, both in the northern zone and in the southern zone. The plan of Paul Atanganji and the colonial government in Yaoundé is to use the counter militias to create confusion within the ranks of our self-defense groups and to carry out mayhem that 
they will, they, that they will then use to qualify us as terrorists. According to intelligence that, intelligence that we have gotten, sources privy to the arrangement, Atang and Jis army is assigned to carry out missions similar to those of our self-defense groups. Like in the flop terrorist incident, Atang and Jis militia we carry out indiscriminate arrests of innocent people. They will frame them up and then take ransom before killing them. The militia will attack. They will arrest in foreigners visiting Amberland so that the international community is made our territory as a terrorist no-go area. Atanganji's army has also been instructed to launch attacks on vital private institutions and state property. Atangandis militia will attack prominent people in Ambazonian territory, including politicians, schools, teachers, lawyers, and the courts. They will break into businesses, loot, and ravage them. The colonial government's ultimate goal in this is, is to then turn around and put the blame on our self-defense groups. Issa Chiroma will hold one of those press briefings like the one he heard with the, with the tourists and put in display some, some of their atrocities which he will attribute to our self-defense groups. You may be wondering or oh, ask him, so what does this mean to us and to this revolution? What it means is that we have to neutralize at all costs Atanganji himself, his allies and the militia. Paul Atanganji and the likes of him can no longer be allowed to walk freely on our territory. Why they plot to exterminate all of us? We will neutralize him. We will neutralize him by getting all our self-defense groups to step forward now and get associated with the unity platform, which is, which is the ASC. This is the time we must identify who is fighting for who and who is defending who. And it means that if we have to outsmart Atanganji, and the disappearing influence of the Yawande's regime, unity and collaboration under the Amazonia Self-Defense Council must now be an imperative for all our groups. We must not, out of greed and lust for power and control, give our detractors the opportunity to slaughter our own and then turn it on us. It is the position of this interim government to minimize as much as possible collateral damage on our territory in the course of this crusade. And in view of this, a warning is hereby passed to any youth and or any groups who would want to accept bribe to either join or form any defense group other than those recognized by the Ambazonia Self Defense Council, refuse to take Atanganji's blood money. But if you really have to take, take his guns, please take it and turn it against him and his partners. Refuse to raise the gun against your own brothers, against your own sisters, and your fathers and mothers. Refuse to loot and destroy the property of our own people who are who are sponsors and supporters of this revolution it's time for opopo one man one power for self-defense fellow ambazonians boya is getting closer and closer by the day as the interim government continues to make progress on a daily basis the launch of my trip to boya we have seen is getting our enemies, the enemies of our revolution, just opposing and making errands all over the place, 
trying to look for solutions that they never cared for in the past two years of this crisis. More than ever before, we hear of persistent calls for dialogue from quarters we never expected. We saw the French ambassador make a heated to inconceivable trip to Bermuda to meet with leaders. We also saw a hastily organized meeting in the American embassy in Yaoundé in which they came out talking urgent dialogue. We also have seen a carefully fabricated plot stage managed by Isa Chiroma, the communication minister, to frame up our self-defense brothers, flop right in their own eyes. The cabinet of the Federal Republic continues to meet in sessions after sessions to draw up plans that will usher us the ultimate victory that we need. Despite the fact that our president, Sisiko Julius Ayuktabi and other leaders are still being held in comunicado. And yesteryear, and yesterday, April 5th made it exactly three months since they were abducted. I can only but assure you today that the state of our revolution remains very, very strong. We are moving on. We are making progress. The stakes are getting higher for the colonial, for the colonial regime, for our enemy. We are making advances towards Boya. I am excited to inform you today that thousands of Amazonians have already paid for their trip to Boya. And many others, both in the diaspora and in the homeland, are paying now as I address you this evening. Our acting president, Dr. Sarko, has sworn that if he gets the money on his table, the two million dollars into his hands, within three months, Boya would no longer be a dream, but a mere possession. That is why every one of us must go out and now pay for the trip. If you haven't yet made your contribution or donation, please consider doing so right now. Do so today and add your name among those who have already done so. The website again is www.mytriptoboya.com. Again, because of the strides we are making, we are now seeing movements and such consultations in the homeland that we, that we have not before seen. When in the past, 50, when in the past 56, 56 years, you didn't hear the French or see the French diplomats rushing out to our territory to consult with our community leaders and proposing the form of state. They think will resolve this crisis. We never saw that. When did the French in the past 56 years come running to us hoping that we propose solutions to a problem they created in the first place? Fellow Ambazonians, events of history should remind all of us that the French are not our friends. They are our number one enemies. Paul Beer is just a stooge and a smokescreen. He is just a masquerade through which the French have channeled the enslavement of the southern Cameroons and rip us of our resources of resources that rightfully belong to us. In fact, when this war must have been fought and won, the French government must be held to pay years in indemnities of the exploitation and the collateral damage they inflicted on our land, on our resources, and on our institutions. Yes, the French are our enemies number one in this crisis. The French army is the only foreign army that has been seen in Yaoundé 
advising the regime how to best crush and decimate our people, our towns, and villages. French armies had been sighted in helicopters in Manu, surveying the terrain and mapping it out for easy invasion and destruction by the colonial troops. French armies have been pictured planning motion detectors in bushes in Manu to use in tracking unarmed civilians for the slaughter. The French have also been reported installing surveillance cameras in Manfe and in Kumba, and of course Bamenda too, to be used in monitoring the movements of our people. The French are the first foreign country to pull its citizens out of Amazonia. Indication that they may be out to do what they left undone in Rwanda. And now the French ambassador rushed up to Bamenda to lay the groundwork for a genocide they still have on paper. He tells the people in Bamenda that the people of Bamenda belong to the Bamenda Keys, and that Boya belong to the Basas. We have learned that in discussions with community leaders in Bamenda. The French emissary stated that a federal system that hooks up the northern region to the west region and the southern region to the littoral region would be the best arrangement that saves this revolution and end the crisis. The French stated that the northern zone is naturally part of Bamileki West region. And of course also that the southern zone is also naturally part of the littoral region. What the French are proposing here is a setup, the reason for which they will have to invade our territory, the way they know we will not accommodate it. Their suggestion tantamount to a slap on our faces. It assumes that we are illiterate and really hasn't come to real understanding of what our Anglo-Saxon heritage is all about. Or how else would one explain the fact that the French would think for even a moment that Bamenda becomes part of Bakusam and that Boya becomes part of Douala. How can they even imagine this? It is an insult, to say the least. And we are going to resist the French with every fiber of, fiber of blood in our souls. For years, the French have, so the, the French have sought out oil our timber, our bananas, our rubber, and you name the rest. They paid no taxes to our local governments. And they are still even now grand planning on how to completely erase us from the map of Africa. Can you imagine that at the very moment we are decrying annexation and colonization the French are out talking about a complete annihilation of our territory. The French should go home with this, that the Southern Cameroons would not accept any adjustment of its boundaries. Attained in 1919, when the British mandate was uh, implemented over the Southern Cameroons. In other words, the Southern Cameroons has clearly defined boundaries with which, I mean, we are the public of Cameroon, and we will not, for any reason, by any means, accept the alteration of an inch of those boundaries. That is not going to happen. Fellow Ambazonians, the interim government of Ambazonia would like to seize this opportunity to express sincere gratitude to His Excellency Peter Henry Ballerin, 
United States Ambassador to La Republic de Cameroon for his initiative to seek an enduring solution to this crisis. The U.S. Ambassador took the initiative that even the President of Cameroon has not. In fact, we won't be talking about this crisis today had the colonial government done exactly what the U.S. Ambassador is trying to do. Having said that, it appears apparent that the U.S. Ambassador isn't well armed with the fact of this crisis, with the fact of our history, or that he has simply been misguided in his cause for dialogue. You are apparently aware, sir, that at the escalation of this crisis, Southern Cameroonians ask for inclusive dialogue, time and again, through which lasting solutions to it should be articulated as a way out. The BS colonial regime turned it down again and again. Every one of those appeals, and in its stead, the colonial government chose cosmetic reforms and then turned to repression. Our lawyers, for example, demanded simple reforms. Very little was offered them. Our teachers also demanded reforms, and very little was done. We ask for a return to the federal system that would, at the least, return some amount of self-government to the regions. And again, we were told that that cannot be put on the table. We were told federation cannot be put on any table of dialogue. The abundance of efforts by the BS regime suppressing all the demands and yearnings of the people of the former British Southern Cameroons have now, as you are all aware, led to genocide, the raising down of whole towns and whole villages. People have been killed right inside their bedrooms. The U.S. ambassador is definitely aware of this. He is aware that thousands of Southern Cameroonians now live in the bushes. That over 3,000 others live in political detentions and over 11,000 in refugee camps in Nigeria. Southern Cameroon's children have been denied education going to two years now because the colonial regime won't withdraw its troops from the street to pave way for the security of the children to go back to school. I cannot even mention the injured and people whose properties will never again be recovered. And yet, we didn't begin for this. It was forced upon us. We didn't ask for it. They pushed it onto us. Once more, the interim government appreciates the intervention of the American ambassador in this crisis. However, we consider that the time we thought of inclusive dialogue is now over. It was far gone as a solution to this crisis. It is exhausted. The time for inclusive dialogue is no longer in our calendar. Ambazonians who have paid the ultimate price, who have died for this revolution, they didn't die or they didn't do so fighting to go back to live with La Republic du Cameroon. They died fighting for a free and an independent federal republic of Ambazonia. Remember September 22nd and October 1st, 2017? A turning back to any form of settlement to the crisis that doesn't name Boya as the capital of a free and independent Ambazonia 
will be a great injustice to all who have sacrificed their blood for this revolution. The word dialogue has ceased to exist in the vocabulary of this interim government. It has been replaced with the word negotiation. Yes, the word dialogue is no longer in the vocabulary of the interim government. It is negotiation. At the negotiation table, which should hold anywhere out of Cameroon and also facilitated by the international community, we want a negotiated settlement that spurs out the modalities for a breakup or parting of ways from French Cameroon. Our minds are made up. We are resolved that never again, never again shall we be part of French Cameroon. Never again shall we be forced to speak French or learn French. Never again shall we have any representation in a country that doesn't represent us or doesn't care about us. Never again. Never again. And one more thing. The people whom the U.S. ambassador invited to his office in Yaoundé, with perhaps the exception of Cardinal Christian Tumi, did not, did not represent Ambazonians. The whole views completely different from the majority of the 8 million Ambazonians who are saying and yearning for a free and independent republic of Ambazonia. The select few who met with the United States ambassador in his office in Yaoundé are the same select few who have been aided, who have been aiding and aiding the colonial regime in Yaoundé, suppressing and reducing the southern Cameroon's masses to the dogs and second-class citizens that they have been made for 56 years and counting. Any form of negotiation that doesn't have the interim government in the room as the main representative of the people of the country called Ambazonia is dead on arrival. New, void, and inconsequential. You can only expect the resistance to continue. We will fight with our lives and with all that we have to secure or until we secure the unconditional freedom for Ambazonia should the colonial regime in Yaoundé refuse to negotiate. We will live free or die fighting for a free Cameroon. Thank you for listening today and God bless you. And God bless Ambazonia. I will spend a few minutes to entertain a few questions from you. If you have any question out there, please put it on the screen. I'd be more than glad to take your question. I will take a few minutes to take your question. And again, thank you for those in Ground Zero for watching. And uh, if you have a question, please, for those of you watching on YouTube, on SCBC, uh, uh, I'm sorry, for those of you watching on Facebook, SCBC Facebook page, you got a question out there, I'd be more than glad to take it. I got only a few minutes. And I want to read the comments here. Jacinta Fon, kind Secretary Chris Anno, job well done, thank you. Uh, College Bongo, no IG, no negotiation, thank you. Uh, Elvis Formonio, Tango, I'm sorry, the speed of this uh, is just so much that I can't really uh, keep up with, it, with the speed. Remember, no negotiation, no, di uh, no dialogue. Patrick Ator, you are an orator, sir, thank you. Uh, LRC is history for us. We are Ambazonians, thank you. Ro, uh, Inzo Imbo, Roland Wing, that's an argument there. 
Again, if there is no question, I really want to thank you for tuning in. Please take the message out. No negotiations. The war continues. The resistance continues. We will live free or die fighting. Good evening. God bless you. Back to the studio. Don't say some principles, no man can.